This video describes scaling instruction fine-tuned language models, a study outlined in a paper by Chung et al. that appeared on Archive in October 2022 and that introduces, among other things, the flan palm 540 billion parameter model. The motivation for this work is that first, large-scale pre-training has driven substantial progress in NLP, a result perhaps best exemplified by GPT-3, and that second, fine-tuning language models on tasks phased as instructions brings further gains in performance. This latter finding has been demonstrated by works such as InstructGPT, FLAN, and T0, among others. Given these results, the core focus of this work is to study the process of scaling up instruction fine-tuning to better understand its effectiveness. The key findings are that scaling up the model size and scaling up the number of tasks both continue to yield performance gains, suggesting that further scaling remains a viable strategy for improving performance. It also finds that including a small number of chain of thought tasks in the fine-tuning mixture is useful for boosting all-round performance. One of the highlight results of the work is the fine-tuning of a model referred to as FLAN Palm with 540 billion parameters on 1,800 tasks, which is found to outperform the existing state-of-the-art, the Palm 540 billion parameter model, by more than 9% on average across four diverse benchmarks. The basic approach is the following. A pre-trained language model is fine-tuned using a large and diverse collection of instructions. As an example, the model is provided inputs like, please answer the following question. What is the boiling point of nitrogen? Required to provide the answer, which here is minus 320.4 Fahrenheit. It is also fine-tuned on chain of thought instruction data. This includes instructions like, answer the following question by reasoning step by step. The cafeteria had 23 apples. If they used 20 for lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? The model must then supply the answer, which here takes the form, the cafeteria had 23 apples originally, they used 20 to make lunch, so they had 23 minus 20 equals 3. They bought 6 more apples, so they have 3 plus 6 equals 9. The model is then evaluated on its ability to generalise to unseen tasks, formulated as prompts. For example, the task could be a question, can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington? Give the rationale before answering. The model is then evaluated on its ability to perform this task. An appropriate answer would be, Jeffrey Hinton is a British-Canadian computer scientist born in 1947. George Washington died in 1799. Thus, they could not have had a conversation together. So the answer is no. To give a sense of the significance of the results, we'll look at progress on the challenging Massive Multitask Language Understanding, or MMLU, benchmark of 57 tasks spanning mathematics, US history, computer science, law, virology, and many other domains. On the x-axis, we have dates spanning from early 2020 up until now. On the y-axis, we have average five-shot score. Here is the plot. Each question in the benchmark has four multiple choice answers, so the performance of random guessing is 25%. The average score of a group of unspecialized Amazon mechanical turkers is 34.5%. By using data about outstanding human test takers at the 95th percentile, expert human performance is estimated at 89.8%. The May 2020 175 billion parameter GPT-3 model achieves 43.9%. The March 2022 70 billion parameter chinchilla model scores 67.6%, while the 540 billion parameter palm model announced in April 2022 scored 69.3%. As part of an innovative competition organised by Jacob Steinhardt's group, competitive forecasters on the Hypermind platform estimated that by June 2023, state of the art on this benchmark would reach 73.2%, while by June 2024, it would reach 75.0%. These forecasts were last updated over a period of a few weeks ending in August 2022. Using instruction fine-tuning, with chain of thought and self-consistency prompting, Flan Palm scores 75.2. Interestingly, this comes ahead of not only the June 2023 Hypermind forecast, but also the June 2024 forecast, 20 months earlier than expectations. At this point, the graph is a reasonable representation of key data points from Table 1 of the first version of the Scaling Instruction Fine-Tuning paper, which is itself a valid summary of relevant numbers. I shared a picture of a similar graph on Twitter, noting that these results are striking. Of course, the degree to which the progress is striking 
very much depends on the quality of the hypermind forecast. Note that the original paper does not use language claiming that the results are striking. That was my phrasing and responsibility. In response to the tweet, one researcher with expertise in language models noted that these hypermind forecasts seem way too low, since they suggest that no meaningful progress would be made. Another tweet highlighted alternative forecasts from metacalculus that were higher. In response to this feedback, I think it's useful to update the graph to include the metacalculus median estimate of 83.3% made in early August 2022, which is similar to Jacob Steinhardt's own median state-of-the-art forecast for June 2023 at 82.0%. This updated graph provides useful additional context. In fact, it's good to note that several days earlier, the authors themselves had already published a second version of their archive paper, which includes the metacalculus prediction. Note that the number is slightly different to the one I've plotted. It varies depending on exactly which day the forecast is selected, but it's in the same ballpark. So my tweet on the 23rd of October, which was based on the table in the first version of the paper, was already two days out of date. I've added a note to the Twitter thread to reflect this. Thanks to the various individuals on Twitter for engaging in the discussion and helping to clarify the record. Comments about my stale tweet aside, the results are still very impressive in my opinion. A gain of almost 6 percentage points over the prior best model on the MMLU benchmark is substantial. Since I think it's useful to dig deeper, we'll talk a little more about the hypermind forecasts themselves next. We'll look specifically at the June 2023 hypermind forecast as an example. This was commissioned by Jacob Steinhardt and his team as part of an effort to get a better handle on reasonable timelines for AI progress. This question was one of six spanning the topics of geopolitics and future AI capabilities. There was a US$5,000 prize per benchmark, which comprised four questions, requesting forecasts for the state of the art at specific dates in 2022, 2023, 2024 and 2025. The competition was funded by Open Philanthropy and hosted on the Hypermind Prediction Market platform. The structure of the competition involved an initial forecasting period in the summer of June 2021, followed by a window to update forecasts in the summer of 2022. The resolution of the outcome and the reward was set to be determined in June 2023. It's interesting to ask how good were the results one year into the competition. In summary, they were not very good. Two of the four forecasts had outcomes that fell outside 90% credible intervals. For good summary, I recommend reading the blog post by Steinhardt entitled AI Forecasting One Year In. This post poses the question, was progress surprising or were the forecasters bad? Several possible limitations were identified as to why the forecasters could have fared poorly. First, the prize of US$5,000 per benchmark, which is split over four questions and divided amongst the forecasters, may not have provided enough incentive to invest time in making good predictions. Second, the Hypermind interface does not allow for providing arbitrary probability distributions as predictions, which may have affected the forecast. Third, it's possible that the forecasters were just not skilled enough. Perhaps the best ones didn't compete, or the forecasts were too unusual compared to traditional forecasts on the platform, which generally target themes like geopolitics. Here, the subjective assessment from Steinhardt was that progress in the first year of the competition up until June 30th, 2022 was still surprising even when accounting for these concerns. He highlights how both his own informal predictions and those of other professional forecasters on other benchmarks did not fare much better than those of the Hypermind forecasters. Now let's look at how the MMLU Hypermind forecast has evolved. Here is the plot. We can see that there were 94 forecasters. We can also see that estimates were revised substantially upwards in the second period of the competition. Note that to produce this aggregate prediction from the forecasters, Hypermind combines all crowd forecasts but places higher weight on forecasters with a good track record. Here is how the forecaster distribution looks. We can see that the Flan Palm result goes beyond the aggregate, but still falls reasonably within the distribution. How does this relate to other forecasts? As noted earlier, we have others to compare to, both from Metacalculus and Jacob Steinhardt, with support from his group. There was an excellent write-up of how the latter forecasts were made in a blog post called Forecasting ML Benchmarks in 2023, and is also recommended reading. There's one quote from this post that is particularly relevant here for the Hypermind MMLU forecast. 
Interestingly, the hypermind median is only at 72.5% right now. Given the ability to combine Minerva and Chinchilla, this intuitively seems too low to me. This was written by Jacob Steinhardt in July 2022. His forecast, which includes intervals that can be found in the blog post, include a median estimate of 82% for the June 2023 MMOU state of the art, which was broadly similar to that of Metacalculus at the time when the forecast was made. The takeaway here is that the hypermind estimates of progress were conservative relative to alternatives such as those made by Metacalculus and by Steinhardt. A more personal takeaway is that these forecasts seem potentially very useful as a way to gauge whether progress falls within expectations. Credit to Jacob and his team for organising them and putting their forecasts into the public domain. I'd echo their recommendation to contribute to future forecasts, particularly if you're a domain expert. Let's now look at the data and language models used in the FLAN fine-tuning process, starting with the data. A broad range of fine-tuning tasks considered, spanning four sources of data. The first is Muffin, which includes tasks like natural language inference, code instruction generation, and others. It spans 69 datasets, 27 task categories, and 80 tasks, 26 of which were introduced as part of this work. Since these terms are open to interpretation, let's clarify how they are being used here. A dataset is an original data source, such as Squad. A task category is a unique task setup. For example, the squad dataset can be configured for multiple task categories like extractive question answering, query generation, and context generation. Finally, a task is a unique dataset task category pair with any number of templates that preserve the task category. An example of a task under this definition is query generation on the squad dataset. The second data source is T0SF, short for T0 sans flan, which uses the task from the T0 work but removes those that fall within Muffet. This contributes a further 55 datasets, 14 categories, and 193 tasks. Third, there is Natural Instructions V2, adding a further 372 datasets, 108 categories, and 1,554 tasks. Finally, there is a mixture of chain of thought reasoning data built from nine datasets, a single task category, and nine tasks. These make use of manually written chain of thought annotations. The families of language models used in the study include T5, Palm, and UPalm. In terms of model sizes under consideration, these range from 80 million parameters up to 540 billion parameters. One further note here, fine-tuning is very lightweight relative to pre-training, using at most 1.6% of total compute, and as little as 0.2% for the bigger models. The evaluation data is selected with the objective of assessing Flan Palm on world knowledge and reasoning tasks. The authors opt not to evaluate on the GPT-3's test suite because many of the training sets associated with these tasks were included in the fine-tuning mixture. Instead, four benchmarks are chosen. First, the MMLU, short for Massive Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark, that, as mentioned earlier, is sourced from exam questions across 57 tasks spanning mathematics, law, medicine, and many other domains. The BBH benchmark, short for Big Bench Hard, refers to a subset of 23 big bench tasks where Palm underperforms the average human rater. Third is TidyQA, which is a benchmark for information-seeking question answering across eight typologically diverse languages like Arabic and Finnish. Finally, the MGSM benchmark, short for Multilingual Grade School Math, is a multilingual benchmark of mathematics problems granularly translated into 10 typologically diverse languages like Bengali and Swahili. Finally, Note that these benchmarks, or variants of them, were also considered as part of the palm work, which did not find significant data contamination between the pre-training set and the downstream test sets. The first set of experiments study the effect of scaling the palm model across different sizes and different numbers of fine-tuning tasks by evaluating few-shot prompted accuracy on held-out tasks. The metric aborted is a normalised average over the four benchmarks spanning many topics, MMLU, BBH, TidyQA, and MGSM which are assessed in various direct prompting and chain of thought prompting combinations. On the x-axis, we plot model size and parameters, and on the y-axis, we report normalised average on held out tasks. We can plot results for no fine-tuning, as well as fine-tuning on 9 tasks, 89 tasks, 282 tasks, or 1,836 tasks. Here are the results. We see that instruction fine-tuning 
moving from grey to dark blue, bring significant gains at all scales, with a particularly notable 9.4% gain on the 540 billion parameter PAR model. We can visualise this slightly differently to understand the effect of number of fine-tuning tasks by plotting the number of fine-tuning tasks on the x-axis and the normalised average on held-out tasks on the y-axis. Here are the results for the 8 billion parameter model, the 62 billion parameter model and the 540 billion parameter model. We observe that up until 282 tasks, there are fairly major gains from increasing the number of fine-tuning tasks, but after this, the gains become minor. It's interesting to ask, why do the gains flatten as the number of tasks increase? Some possible explanations include that, one, the extra tasks are not very diverse, so they do not add much more signal. And two, the gains are driven by eliciting existing knowledge from the model, rather than putting new knowledge into the model. In support of this second explanation, Note that fine-tuning only contributes 0.2% of the total tokens used to train the model. By contrast, we see that model scaling continues to deliver major gains in performance, without much sign of flattening. To understand how the inclusion of chain of thought reasoning into the fine-tuning mixture delivers gains, Flanpalm is compared to the prior state-of-the-art of all benchmark. These include MMLU, Big Bench Hard NLP tasks, Big Bench Hard algorithm tasks, TidyQA, and MGSM. The prior best performances on these benchmarks are 69.3 by Palm 540B with direct prompting, 73.5 by the Code Da Vinci 02 model with chain of thought prompting, 73.9 also by the same Code Da Vinci 02 model with chain of thought prompting, 81.9 from fine tuned by T5, and 55.0 by Palm coupled with Google Translate and chain of thought prompting. As a point of reference, Numbers are also reported for Palm 540p using direct prompting, chain of thought prompting, and chain of thought prompting with self consistency. The 540 billion parameter FLAN Palm model surpasses the state of the art on MMLU with direct prompting. Using chain of thought prompting alone hurts slightly, but combining it with self consistency yields a massive boost. On Big Bench Hard NLP, FLAN Palm using chain of thought and self consistency also works best, setting a new state of the art although only slightly above Palm, with the same prompting strategy. On Big Bench Hard algorithms, Flan Palm still lacks the more specialised Code Da Vinci 02 model by quite a margin, and on Tidy QA, it is similarly still far from the state of the art, although it does deliver major gains over Palm. Finally, on MGSM, the gains are dramatic, with a major improvement over the prior state of the art. To understand the importance of including chain of thought fine-tuning data, Results are first reported on held-out chain-of-thought benchmarks. It's useful to bear in mind here that there are only 9 chain-of-thought fine-tuning datasets, whereas there are 496 non-chain-of-thought fine-tuning datasets. On the x-axis, we plot model size, and on the y-axis, normalised average score. Here are the results. Relative to no fine-tuning, fine-tuning solely on non-chain-of-thought instructions actively harms performance. Fine-tuning on chain-of-thought instructions boosts performance, while fine-tuning on a mixture of both does best overall. We can make an equivalent plot for held-out non-chain-of-thought benchmarks, which looks as follows. This time, we find that chain-of-thought fine-tuning and no fine-tuning perform similarly. We also find that fine-tuning on non-chain-of-thought data and a combination of chain-of-thought and non-chain-of-thought data perform similarly. A reasonable takeaway from these experiments is that instruction fine-tuning improves unseen task performance for tasks that have the same prompting paradigm as the fine-tuning instructions, Consequently, both chain of thought and non-chain of thought data is required to produce good results under both prompting paradigms. For the next experiments, the authors note that zero-shot chain of thought reasoning is a particularly useful ability since finding good few-shot chain of thought exemplars often requires significant prompt engineering. Zero-shot chain of thought prompting is performed by inserting the phrase let's think step by step as a suffix into the prompt. To visualise the effect of instruction fine-tuning, we plot model size on the x-axis and accuracy on the big bench hard dataset on the y-axis. For the 8 billion parameter model, relative to palm zero shot, it is found that palm zero shot with chain of thought prompting performs much worse. However, relative to flan palm zero shot, which has seen chain of thought instructions during fine tuning, flan palm zero shot with chain of thought prompting yields a boost. This trend is reflected both at 62 billion parameters and at 540 billion parameters. A takeaway from this experiment is that fine-tuning on chain-of-thought data enables zero-shot chain-of-thought reasoning. To demonstrate the generality of instruction fine-tuning on a large number of tasks, 
experiments are conducted on broad collections of models, with parameters ranging from 80 million up to 540 billion, and spanning various model families such as T5, Palm, Contpalm, which corresponds to Palm that has been pre-trained for a further 500 billion tokens, and UPalm, which extends Palm with a further 20,000 steps of pre-training with a UL2 objective. For each such model, a corresponding FLAN variant is produced. We can compare each baseline with its FLAN variant by reporting a normalized average score across the MMLU, Big Bench Hard, TidyQA, and MGSM benchmarks. For T5 small, the gain from instruction fine tuning is 6.1. For T5 base, the gain is 11.6. For T5 large, the gain is 18.8. For T5 XL, the gain is 23.2. And for T5 XXL, the gain is 26.6. On the palm models, the gain is not quite so large, but still substantial, a trend that holds for contpalm and upalm. One observation from prior work is that standard benchmark performance may not correlate with human preferences about model outputs when it comes to long-form answers about open-ended requests. For this reason, the authors run a human study on model outputs across 190 open-ended questions spanning topics like creativity and reasoning. For this, Outputs from Palm 540B and Flam Palm 540B are compared. In each case, this is done by sampling five model responses with a temperature of 0.7, then ranking the responses and applying a heuristic filter to discard low quality answers. For zero shot questions, the results are as follows, where dark blue indicates that human labelers prefer the outputs of Flam Palm, light blue is where the two models were tied, and gray indicates that the outputs of Palm were preferred. Overall, Flam Palm is strongly preferred. When considering zero-shot chain of thought prompts, this trend is even more evident. Finally, in the few-shot setting, model outputs are roughly ranked equally. The takeaway here is that instruction fine-tuning leads to model responses to open-ended zero-shot questions that are preferred by humans. We'll next look at some example outputs from the Flanpar model in response to open-ended questions. Note that these have been manually selected, rather than randomly sampled. The first explores zero-shot humour and poetry. The input text is, write me a funny poem about a cat driving car. The flan palm output is, I've seen a cat driving a car. I saw it on my way to the bar. I stopped to look and say hi. I asked if he could give me a ride. He looked at me and said no. Then he drove off very slow. I wonder where he was going. Maybe he was just going bowling. The next example assesses zero shot reasoning. The input text is, there are two words making up a common phrase. The first word is the answer to Q1, marathon is to race as hibernation is to what? And the second word is the answer to Q2, what is running but slower? A. The common phrase is, flan palm output, sleepwalk. Finally, an example of zero shot common sense reasoning. The input text is, I am riding a bicycle, the pedals are moving fast, I look into the mirror and I am not moving, why is this? The flan palm output is, I am on a stationary bike. Flanpalm relates to a number of prior works. First, there is work showing the benefits of instruction fine-tuning, such as InstructGPT, Flan, and T0. Some differences to these works include the fact that first, Flanpalm builds on mixtures of datasets from prior work and adds new chain of thought data, as well as other formats like code and dialogue. Second, Flanpalm explores larger model scaling, up to 540 billion parameters rather than 137 billion. Third, Flampalm fine-tunes on a mixture of zero-shot and few-shot instruction formats. Next is related work on reasoning via fine-tuning. Here, prior work has either fine-tuned on a single reasoning dataset, such as work on program induction by Ling et al., or explored models at smaller scale, such as in ESNLI. By contrast, Flampalm shows that use of a fine-tuning mixture, including chain-of-thought data, helps unseen reasoning tasks for both small and large models. Another related work has explored fine-tuning on self-generated chain-of-thought datasets with a technique known as Language Model Self-Improvement, or LMSI. By contrast, Flampalm fine-tunes jointly on both chain-of-thought and non-chain-of-thought data. A third line of prior work has focused on compute-efficient language model improvements, motivated by the observation that scaling language models brings gains, but is costly, as highlighted by the Scaling Laws work of Kaplan et al. There have therefore been a range of efforts to achieve improvements via compute-efficient alternatives. These include Chinchilla, explorations on task transferability, and UL2R. Among these, Flan UPalm shows that UL2R is complementary to instruction fine-tuning. 
Other related improvements in the literature include better architectures like Primer, better training objectives like UL2, and better data as studied in GLAM. We'll now summarise the key findings of the paper. Instruction fine-tuning benefits from model scale and increasing the number of tasks. It is found that scaling the number of tasks brings diminishing gains, but fine-tuning is highly effective at all model scales. Instruction fine-tuning and joint chain of thought and non-chain of thought data bring substantial benefits for reasoning tasks. Instruction fine-tuning generalises across scales, model families such as T5 and PAR, and objectives such as UL2R. Instruction fine-tuning improves usability as assessed by human annotators on open-ended questions. Finally, instruction fine-tuning is efficient. For example, it required only 0.2% of the total compute budget to fine-tune Palm 540 billion and attain a 9.4% gain in performance. These findings suggest that it is likely that instruction fine-tuning will be broadly useful for pre-training language models. We've covered the main ideas in the paper. We'll now go through some of the nuts and bolts of the FLAN fine-tuning process. Each model uses the same hyperparameters, except for learning rate, batch size, dropout, and the number of fine-tuning steps. The learning rate schedule is constant. Fine-tuning is performed with the Ada Factor optimizer. For efficiency, packing, as used in T5, is used to combine examples into a single sequence, while an end-of-sequence token is used to separate inputs from targets. Masking is used to prevent tokens from attending across boundaries in the pack. When it comes to evaluating each model, one checkpoint is used for all evaluations. Finally, the implementation of the experiments uses the jax based T5X framework. We now turn to the architecture and training configurations used in the FLAN fine-tuning study. In terms of parameters, models are studied that range in scale from 80 million parameters up to 540 billion parameters. The first family of models considered are FLAN fine-tuned T5 models, each of which use an encoder-decoder architecture and is trained with a span corruption pre-training objective. By comparing the pre-training flops and the fine-tuning flops, we can see that fine-tuning contributes only a small fraction to the total compute cost, at most 1.6%. Next, there are the FLAN Palm models, which are decoder-only and are trained with a causal language modelling objective. Here too, a comparison of pre-training and fine-tuning flops shows that very little computation is devoted to fine-tuning in relative terms. A further Palm baseline is included called FLAN Cont Palm, which corresponds to the Palm model that is pre-trained for the greater number of tokens, approximately 1.3 trillion in total before FLAN fine-tuning, and is otherwise similar to the other PALM models. The last model is FLAN U PALM, which is also decoder-only, but uses a combination of prefix language modelling and span corruption as a training objective. This too employs only a small fraction of the total compute budget for fine-tuning, 0.2% in total. To give a better sense of the data seen by the model during fine-tuning, we'll walk through the data formats used in this work. We'll first consider instructions without exemplars, starting with those that do not include chain of thought. An example instruction is, answer the following yes-no question. This is followed by the question itself, can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? The target here is simply the answer, yes. We can compare this to an example with chain of thought. This time, the instruction is, answer the following yes-no question by reasoning step by step. The question remains the same, can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? This time, the answer includes reasoning. A haiku is a Japanese poem, three-line poem, that is short enough to fit in 280 characters. The answer is yes. The part highlighted in blue identifies the chain of thought content. A further kind of format consists of instructions with exemplars. The input begins with the instruction, Q, answer the following yes-no question, followed by the question itself, could a dandelion suffer hepatitis? And the answer, A, no. Then comes the instruction again, this time followed by the question of interest, can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? And then a colon prompt for the answer. As before, the target is simply yes. Finally, there are instructions with exemplars with chain of thought. Such an input starts with the instruction Q. Answer the following yes no question by reasoning step by step, followed by a question Could a dandelion suffer hepatitis? Then a chain of thought rationale A. Hepatitis only affects organisms with livers. Dandelions don't have a liver, followed by the answer is no. Then comes the same instruction, followed by the question of interest. Can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? Then an A colon prompt for the answer. As above, the target includes chain of thought reasoning in addition to the answer. We'll now turn to evaluation methods and metrics. On MMLU and Big Bench Hard, the models are evaluated under both direct and chain of thought prompting setups. On TidyQA, 
Only direct prompting is measured with an exact match score. Passage highlighting is not evaluated. For MGSM, only chain of thought prompting is evaluated, since it was found that direct prompting scores were very poor. The few shot configurations follow prior work. In particular, MMLU is evaluated five shot, Big Bench Hard is three shot, Tidy QA is one shot, and MGSM is eight shot. To report metrics, a normalized average is reported for each model in a style similar to Big Bench. This normalized average is formed as the macro average over six normalized scores. MMLU direct prompting and chain of thought prompting, Big Bench Hard direct prompting and chain of thought prompting, Tidy QA direct prompting, and MGSM chain of thought prompting. In the video description, you can find links to further resources, slides, and references. Thank you for your attention.